All right, welcome back to The Baseball Show. I'm your host, Andy Singleton. That's your other host, Ralph Lifshitz. We're here to help you get prepped for the 2017 fantasy baseball season. We appreciate all the love and support this video series has been getting, and uh, we want to encourage you to continue showing that support. Share these videos, like them, continue subscri uh, subscribing, continue leaving your comments, etc., etc. We will make sure to address any specific players you request to us, so continue to uh, submit your suggestions. We're going to tackle three hitters today, three hitters that are somewhat perplexing based on past success as compared to 2016 success, as compared to potential success now that openings have arisen. Uh, I'm talking about John Segura, Jonathan VR, and Tom Murphy, all who play different positions, all who have varying opportunities presented to them. Let's start with Segura, who has in, in the offseason been traded to Seattle, so he loses the benefit of a hitter's park. Uh, he can probably and should go back to playing shortstop, so he probably will lose second base eligibility at some point, uh, but there is maybe room to hope that he can still get 10 games in there somehow. I don't necessarily know who the Mariners would roll out at short to make that possible, but it's still in the realm of possibility. Uh, Let's just dive into the numbers. The splits say he stole more bases on the road, which led to more runs being scored. Uh, but he was clearly a better hitter all around the chase field, uh, which goes to what I was saying. Moving to Seattle, he loses the benefit of that. Uh, that is pretty important based on where he's being drafted and how people are viewing him. Uh, he's basically had four full seasons in the majors, too good, too bad. Uh, the bad weren't necessarily bad. They were just not to the level of what the good ones were. I don't think he's a 20 home run guy, but I could definitely see 15. Uh, I also think that drops his RBI production back down into the 50 range, which is not really uh, validating his, his current ADP. Uh, I do think he'll get you to 25 steals. I do think he'll get you 65 runs scored, but everything else is a mirage to me. Uh, he's had two – Babip inflated good seasons, and again, he moves to a less hitter-friendly park. He's currently going as a fourth-round pick, um, which is easy to say as others have. He has bust written all over him. But, I mean, really, do you trust this guy? You know, it's funny because he's a guy that I actually have in – a couple of deep dynasty leagues that are salary cap. So it's not something that we're redrafting every year. And I had to make the decision because uh, his contract was coming up, whether to franchise him or not. And he made a lot of sense to do that with. But when I'm looking at the redraft situation, I view him completely different. Um, you know, in my dynasty league, he's somebody that I got on the cheap. I held for a while. Now he's got great value. And, you know, there's no reason for me to get rid of him. Um, when I look at him from a, from a redraft perspective, the fact that he has shortstop eligibility helps him a little bit because shortstop there certainly is a lot more shallow than second base. The second base is stacked this year. It might be one of the deepest positions on the board. Um, but Segura, who I really, really like, was heavily aided by his park in his division. And I'm going to throw some numbers at you right now. So uh, Segura in games between Chase Field, which was his home park with the Diamondbacks, and then his visiting games in Coors Field, he hit 336 with 13 of his 20 homers, 17 stolen bases, and about 500, uh, excuse me, and about 400 uh, plate appearances. Everywhere else, he hit 290, 295. So I think the batting average is sustainable because he's quick, he makes good contact, hits a lot of ground balls, can hit it all over the field. So he's a guy that's going to have a high bay bit because of the kind of skill set that he has. But only seven homers everywhere else and 16 steals. So he's got a speed average guy. I really doubt that he's going to hit 20 home runs again. Um, the line drives did go up. I mean, his, his home run to fly ball ratio wasn't absurd. It was 13.5%. So it's not awful. But he's. I, I have to look at the fact that um, he's going from one of the, 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 the best hitting havens in all of baseball to, at best, a neutral hitting environment in Safeco Field. Um, I think that some of his peripheral numbers, you know, some of his peripheral numbers and counting stats will probably stay the same, if not get a little bit better. He could hit the, the top of the Mariners' order. Mariners' order could potentially be better uh, than the Diamondbacks. They, you know, 
they they are they're kind of a sneaky good team. They were you know a competitive team last year as well. I think they've improved a little bit uh, on top of what they were last year. But I really doubt that the power is going to return. Those 19, 19, excuse me, those twenty homers are really what sort of put him over the top. So I think he's probably more of a ten to to thirteen homer guy this year. Could steal a lot of bases still. Um, and while I think he'll maintain a high average, I don't think he'll be as high as it was last year. So that fourth round number is 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 kind of scary. If he's somebody that I could grab in the seventh round, because I think that's where his value will probably lie. I'll definitely like him. He's not going to be the worst shorting, short, not the worst starting shortstop that you could have, but he's certainly not going to be the first choice off my board. And there's a, a solid chance that he could bust. I don't think he'll be awful, but if you're expecting a repeat of last year, I think you're you're sadly mistaken. Yeah, you mentioned him being a, a speed average guy, which you know they've been good and mm -hmm. useful, but he's not elite at anything. The only reason we ever viewed him kind of creeping to that elite level was uh, the power that he added, which we both don't think he really truly possesses. I maxed him at 15 this year. You said 12 to 13, similar you know range. But again, it's 25 steals and a 275 average making you think fourth round pick. It's not making me think fourth round pick uh, at any position. Uh, I, I like the versatility he's going to give you, as you mentioned. You know, he will have shortstop and second base eligibility. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, he might lose that second base eligibility depending on what kind of league you're in and the settings. Uh, but, yeah, none of these numbers are elite. And the high average, again, even the even the average is not elite. You know, he's had two good years, two decent years. Like, what was it, in the, the 260 range uh, mm -hmm. on, the, on those two down years? So let's average that out. We're looking at like a 280-ish hitter. I'll take 280, but, again, not in the fourth round, not for – a guy I'm putting a premium price tag on that's going to get me a handful of steals. Uh, it's not going to, it'll help me in the category. If I get three, four, five guys like that, yes, I can win the category, but he's not doing it by himself. Uh, so I'm not looking necessarily in that direction. I think if you want to go for somebody that kind of similar, you know, position to him, guy that's starting to be remembered a little now, that is really truly more of a speed average guy, that's D. Gordon. Uh, I'd, feel safe for taking D. Gordon, who I think is going a couple rounds after, um, and it's going to give you probably better production if you're looking at just speed and average. Uh, so if, if you think the home run power with Segura was a mirage, I would agree with you, and uh, I think that's where the value falls. I'm with you. All right, so let's move on to uh, Jonathan VR, who is another intriguing player. Uh, and more so because his numbers appear to have been trending in the right direction before just last season, and there's some consistency to back that confidence. So what did he do exactly in 2016 other than get more at-bats to elevate his numbers? His baby certainly looks inflated at 373, but as Ralph mentioned when we talked about Christian Yelich, that's the type of player he is. It's less about luck and more about him playing to his strengths. He puts the ball on the ground and he utilizes his speed. He also tries to be a gap hitter instead of trying to crush bombs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so if you want to look at that baby number and say, oh, th this is going to regress. No, look at his career numbers. That's the kind of hitter he is. And, you know, it's not a luck driven number for him. Uh, he still strikes out way more than you'd like. In fact, he strikes out a ton. But last year he did something different. It appears as though he learned how to take a walk. And that's what you want with a guy – with this kind of speed that's going to add to his stolen base totals. It's going to add to his run production. Uh, I'm definitely a believer in VR, uh, especially his versatility. Um, he can play all around the infield, but I'm also buying his regression a little. His home run and stolen base ratios nearly doubled last season, and they still weren't too shabby before that. If he can maintain his 2016 plate appearances, and you exclude his 2016 performance. So, in other words, go back to his career norms. He would be in line for 43 stolen bases and 11 home runs this season, which is a great baseline and still has room to grow just in case he really did elevate his game to a new level because he's still he's still young. I believe he's 25 at this rate. He'll be 26 yeah. in uh, 2017. Uh, I personally believe in VR's bat, but I think you're setting yourself up for trouble if you think he's the third best shortstop in fantasy. Uh, he's currently got an ADP of 21 overall, which puts him in the second round, which is just, you know, you're really, really, really a VR believer 
if you're if you're going that far to take them. Uh, I think it's a huge risk, um, you know, huge risk reward scenario, uh, and it's just something that's a little too too rich for my taste personally. Um, but I definitely do believe in his back. Uh, so take that for what it for what it's worth. Yeah, and I have to I have to agree. He's somebody that's definitely tough uh, to buy in at that current ADP. Uh, the numbers are great. I think Villar is a very good player. He's going to be a very useful fantasy player, but I like him a lot better at like Gene Segura's uh, ADP. If I could get him in the late third round or the fourth round, I think I would take that chance. I don't think the batting average will be as high as it was last year, but the, conversely, he gets a lot of walks. Uh, so he's going to be good in on-base percentage leagues. I think he maintains that. That also helps the stolen base numbers. He ran 79 times last year, obviously at 61 steals. I don't know if he'll run 79 times again, but I do think that you can see 35-plus steals as almost a certainty with him as long as he's healthy. And as you said, he gets the same number of at-bats. I just don't expect – I expect to see more of like a 250, 260 sort of an average. I doubt that the homers um, – are at the level you know that they were. He was you know pretty high up there with just enough homers. If you look at those statistics in ESPN, he had nine just enough homers. Um, a lot of them are line drive homers. So he does make hard contact. Uh, he makes solid contact. He is a good hitter, but I just I think that the numbers are just going to be scaled down a little bit from last year. The average should be lower. He shouldn't have as many steals. I don't think he hits 19 homers again. I think it's probably somewhere more in the you know 12 to 15 range uh, would probably make sense to me because like I said, he does have power, but I just highly doubt he's going to have you know that sort of 19 uh, homer homer uh, or 20 homer number again. I just don't see it happening. And the 61 steals to me too, especially in this day and age, it's nearly impossible uh, to project that out. So. You know, if you, if you put him down for like a 260 average, you know, maybe, you know, 13 to 14, 15 homers uh, and 45 steals, I would totally buy into it. I think he's still going to score a lot of runs. He's going to help you in on base percentage leagues. But the second round, uh, that's another player that has bust written all over. him. Yeah, the this, this second round that high, I want guys that I'm getting above average contributions from in multiple categories. Um uh, you hit the number on the head for me. Four. I was, was going to set the over under at 45 on the steals. He's a steals guy primarily first. Uh, he's going to give you a little bit of the other stuff, but mm. I don't think it's enough to justify him getting up there. I mean, a guy like Altuve, who you know is worth his position, is because you know talking about contributing above average to every category. He's going to give you the high steals. He's added power to his game. He's giving you runs. He's giving you high average. That's the kind of guy that yeah, you you say. Okay, absolutely. I'm taking him in the first round. If he falls to the second, even better. VR is a guy that with even just a little regression is not going to come close to matching that. As you mentioned, you know, flip-flopping with Segura and put him in the fourth round, the versatility makes it so uh, and, and completely, you know, backs that more. It makes it feel more comfortable to accept. Mm. But at this level, 21st overall, uh, I, I think you're reaching. Uh, and, again, that's not to say we dislike him as a player. It's just to say we dislike his value, and uh, it's it's you know you're gonna find a hard time even trying to trade for a guy like that if he gets off to a slow start because guys are gonna be looking at him going he's still a second round guy I'm not trading a second round guy for a fifth round guy and you know you're gonna be kind of stuck so whether he gets off to a good start or bad start he's gonna hold that position because it's gonna linger with people uh, which kind of just makes it a very risky pick to make. Yeah, he's one okay. of those players that on his face, I like him a lot. You know, um, in once again, Dynasty Keeper Leagues, he's somebody I'm holding on to because uh, he's somebody that you bought in and got at great value. Um, so he's not somebody you're going to give away. But in in redraft for where he's going, really tough. Yes. Helium, as we hate Helium. to say. Helium. All right. I love it when we can discuss players that one of us has a particular fondness of. And this next guy has been mentioned on numerous shows we've done so far that had nothing to do with catchers, had nothing to do with Colorado, had nothing to do with anything that would make you think Tom Murphy's name should be mentioned, but yet somehow Ralph has found a way to sneak it in. So I'm hoping that there's more to this than just the fact he's playing his games, or his home games, I should say, at Coors Field, or as you like to say, Coors. Um, I personally have him ranked as my 13th catcher. He's currently going as the 15th catcher. Uh, 
you know, Nick Conley's gone, so there's 289 at bats to spread around. Tony Walters is going to take some of those. I don't think he's going to take all of them. Uh, doesn't Murphy strike out too much, though? Now, I, I know I can tell you right off the bat, I'm going to let you take this one away. I really have nothing more on Murphy other than I do like him. I'm willing to gamble on him. Uh, like I said, 13th catcher on my board, so it's right outside the top 12, which means great second catcher to pick up uh, with a lot of upside. The number I know you're going to throw at me, though, his 48% hard hit uh, percentage would have led the league had he qualified last year. That's how – much power this guy potentially has, and he's playing a course. But come on, it, you know, can he do it for a full season? Yeah, and I think he can. I think what you saw last year in the PCL, uh, he was injured, and once he came back, is you know, you just saw improvements uh, in his game. Um, he's had some issues with strikeouts, obviously. You know, he showed that last year on the major league level. Um, but there was a vast improvement between 2015 and 2016. He went from a guy that struck out around 30, 30% of the time his first time um, through AAA to a guy that was around 24% of the time uh, his second time through AAA. And he just destroyed it, you know, while he was there. His numbers were, you know, 327, 361, a 647 slugging percentage. By the way, that's even beaten by what his uh, 43 at bat um, slugging percentage was in the majors at 651. So I think that, Though he strikes out a lot, you know, maybe it'll be around 28%. You can deal with that because of some of the other stuff that he's giving you. Uh, in particular, you know, huge power, huge hard contact. Um, I think he will see a majority of the at-bats uh, for the Rockies. I don't think it will be Walters, who's more of a defensive guy. Um, I think that he's there's a chance that he sees, you know, 350 to 400 at-bats. He's definitely somebody you want to own. And what his discounted value really is in comparison to what he could potentially be. I think he could be a, a top five catcher next year, playing his home games in cores, how hard he hits the ball, um, the fact that he's made improvements, um, you know, in his overall game. And does he walk enough? No, I'd like to see him walk a little bit more. There are some contact issues there, but, you know, Coors, Coors helps a few things. It boosts, you know, home run balls, but more than anything else, it boosts batting average on balls in play. That's going to help his average. Who cares about how many times he's striking out if he's got, you know, a 265, a 275 average, and he hits potentially 25 to 30 home runs if he sees enough at bats. And I really think he's a player that if he sees that enough at bats, he can do that. I would probably put the over under probably on 20 more than I would 25. But I think if he sees enough at bats, his ceiling is 30. We saw what Trevor Story did last year. I didn't expect to see that. I'm much higher on Murphy than I ever was on Story. Um, and I think a part of that is is his position. Uh, and I think he's part of this influx with Sanchez, um, you know, Contreras, and some others that are coming up through the minors right now. Over the next three years, there's going to be a huge injection in terms of uh, talent and offensive prowess into the catcher position. So I got two questions for you regarding Murphy, but comment about sure. the story thing. The, the story power outburst started in spring training, uh, which was not in the Rocky Mountain air. So I, I would just say that just to say I don't think story's power, although it doesn't hurt to be a Coors, um, I don't think that's where that – it was completely fueled by Coors, I should say. Um yeah. Second, there is one big name catcher still out there on the free agent market, uh, especially with, you know, Baltimore locking up uh, Wellington Castillo. Uh, and the Rockies have shown they are looking to spend some money and still bring some people in. Uh, I'm talking about Matt Weeders, of course. And, you know, this could very well by the time this airs be irrelevant. But my point being, <laughs> does Murphy have a full grasp of the Rockies, you know, confidence and trust that he is their everyday guy? And second to that, what my other question was, is he a catcher one in fantasy that you're confident in? Um, yeah, but I'm like, I'm the, I'm the high guy on him. Uh, me and my, my podcast mate, uh, Michael Halpern of imaginarybrickwall.com, the two of us uh, are huge Murphy fans. He kind of led the Murphy charge. I jumped on the bandwagon with him, um, and I buy in. I, I, you know, he's a guy that I'm going to own everywhere, and here's why. Because who – cares if you have to drop a catcher who cares i don't draft catchers early enough ever um to ever really worry about it i may reach for murphy a little bit 
but you could probably get them. I mean, you'll probably give me ADP data, but if you can get them in the 15th or 16th round, I'm, I'm actually okay with dropping them uh, and adding somebody else. If it doesn't work out, you can add them back. Uh, you can cycle catchers. I'm a big believer in what we over in Rasball call Franken catcher, where you kind of just target matchups, you know, who's playing against who, and you just cycle catchers out, you know, through the weeks or over a couple of weeks. And uh, you don't really have a starting catcher any particular time. There's only a handful of them that are actually valuable. And sometimes with the ADP, it's just not worth it. So right. I am confident in, in, in him as a catcher one, but there's probably only five or six guys that I'm confident in as a catcher one uh, that I'd actually be willing to draft. And that number might even be a little bit high. I'm probably going to own Murphy if I have eight redraft teams. I'll probably own Murphy in seven places. <laughs> Well, he's, he's currently the 15th catcher off the board, so much later than round 15. Uh, Ralph is an advocate. Uh, I am a believer, but not as a catcher one. Like I said, I have him ranked just outside of that at 13. So um, chew on that. Hopefully you'll be back. Hopefully you like this one, like this video, comment, subscribe. If you're not already subscribed. And uh, that's going to do it for this week with three hitters.